right, next up we have our next speaker, which is Karen Cook from Merchants Bank of Indiana. And we're going to continue this theme that Courtney started about um, standing up for yourself because sometimes in order to stand up for yourself, you have to write a different story. And Karen's going to talk to us about that. I was waiting for my music. (laughs) Before it happened, my pen was full of ink. And I'm not talking about a pen in the traditional sense. Google's definition of a pen is a writing instrument. Well, it's an instrument used to write or draw with ink. I'm speaking about it in more of a metaphorical sense. You know, the gift that each one of us is given to write the chapters of our story. And like I said, my pen was pretty full of ink, and I was in a particularly damn good chapter of my story when it happened. I had a job that I I felt fulfilled at. My marriage was good. I felt loved, safe, and secure. And then when I was eight months pregnant, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I froze. I was scared and in shock. What was gonna happen to my baby girl? Would I be there to be your mom? And in that moment, I had to hand my pen over to the doctors and nurses to heal me. Anybody who's been through cancer treatment or any kind of medical treatment knows that it can be draining, both physically and emotionally. Things happen to your body that you are not in control of. All you can do is just get through it. Well, spoiler alert, I got through it. (laughs) I beat the cancer. And my beautiful daughter is 15 years old and thriving today. But one thing that I didn't do after that treatment was take that pen back from those doctors and nurses and refill the ink. I had a lot going on. I was trying to adjust to motherhood and create this beautiful life that I had dreamed about for my family. I was going through a job transition because the year was 2008 and I was working in the mortgage industry. So anybody that is, right, yeah, you knew it was falling apart at the seams. So I had to get a new job, and my husband also lost his job. We had bills to pay, things to do. I had to forge ahead. I was in survival mode. And quite frankly, even if I wanted to refill my pen, I didn't know where it was. I emerged with this insane need to control everything and everybody around me. And I wasn't even in control of my own narrative because I didn't have my pen. I would wake up every day and immediately look outside for how I was supposed to feel. How is my husband today? Is he having a good day? Is he having a bad day? What does my child need? Well, my husband and I had more bad days than good, and there were moments during that time where I felt like I was standing in front of him, waving my pen, pleading for him to take it to write a chapter that would, be, that would make us both happy again. He never took that pen. Instead. He decided to leave and we got divorced. Things at work were not much better. I was working in a toxic environment led by a manager who was controlling and controlled us all with fear. There were times I would try to offer a suggestion and I would be met with this crazy ass response that I was crazy and no, Karen, that would never work. What are you thinking? Or worse, he would ignore me. Recently in a meeting, We were at a table and he went around to each one of my peers asking if anybody had anything to contribute for the greater good. When he got to me, he paused, made direct eye contact, just to be sure that I knew he saw me, and then he went right on to the next person. He ignored me. I felt unseen and not worthy of contributing. I was so frustrated, I wanted to scream. I was trying to put everything back in the box, control everything. One day I was scrolling LinkedIn and I came across a post about Rise and Thrive. I hopped over to Rebecca's website, read about the program, and filled out the, why would you want to participate in Rise and Thrive? But the last question 
um, was, why do you want to participate in Rise and Thrive? And I told Rebecca a story <clears throat> about how my first boss told me that I was one of the most courageous young people he had ever had the opportunity to work with. And I could feel that courage somewhere deep inside me, but I just didn't know my way back to it. Ten minutes later, Rebecca and I had a conversation on the phone, and it was the most loving, caring conversation I had had with somebody after I had showed my humanness to them. It felt like Rebecca was reaching through the phone with my pen in the palm of her hand, trying to give it to me. Right. I knew Rise and Thrive was what I needed. <clears throat> but to get there, I had to go through that nasty, crazy ass boss of mine and ask for permission. Let's just say that conversation did not go well. And at the end of it, he told me he would not support my participation in Rise and Thrive in any way. I was devastated and angry. I was so angry because in that moment I realized I had spent the last decade of my life serving in an organization that did not care about me, that did not see me. So what did I do? I joined Rise and Thrive anyway. <laughs> I took a bold, courageous step forward for myself. And then I paused. Much like I did when I was diagnosed 15 years ago, but this time was so different. I didn't freeze, I paused. I paused and I listened or felt how my body felt. And I quickly realized that my nervous system had been in fight or flight for the last 15 years. And I listened to the way that I was talking to myself in my head. And I relearned, or I, I changed that narrative, and I relearned that I am capable. But the most important thing that I did was I literally picked my pen up and I started journaling. Because after all this time, I was not afraid of what was coming out. Because I'm capable. And I was ready to process my life. But after all this time of not going, or, or of trying to avoid it, and going over it, around it, anywhere, I learned that the only way forward is to actually go through it. Go through every single chapter of your life. The happy ones, the sad ones, the ones of grief and so much heartache that it makes you physically ill. And the only thing that you can do that day is get out of bed and go to the bathroom. I have a new job now. I work for an amazing organization and a lovely human being and a team of humans that care about me and they ask for my opinion and my feedback and when I give it to them, they listen to me. Picking my pen back up feels powerful and the power gives me the ability to make the decisions about what I want for my life. Take a minute and think about who's holding your pen because like yours, or like mine, yours has power. And you shouldn't give it away, you should keep it. Because at the end of the day, we're all in charge of our own story. <laughs> Y'all, this work just... <clears throat> I'd love for you to just take a minute and thank you have an amazing community you have friends that are here let's I let's do, introduce yes. you thank you uh kathy amy and heather are my soccer mamas because yes. our daughters all play soccer together <laughs> matt and jessica are here from my old job uh and amy nina Awkward. roland <laughs> eliana and justin are like my, well, we call each other family, right? I so we're friends or family that we've chosen. And then Nicole and Tiffany are here. Long okay. time, and Andy and Gretchen are up there too. Long time, seventh grade, longest friend. So clearly you yes. have a community now that yes. is all around you and supporting yes. you. And we are so glad that you all came to support this badass because she is a badass. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For everything. I love that story so damn much. I can't stand it.